<laughs> Shall we get our next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I think, why not? I have been a huge fan of this man for many, many years. I'm sure you'll find out in just a minute. He is Mr Michael Moore. Get up, stand up. Don't give it up, stand up for your rights. That's your right. Get up, stand up. Don't give it up, don't give up the fight. Go. Nice work, fellas. Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me here. Genuinely, I'm a huge fan of yours. For people who might not be familiar with you just yet, how would you explain the way you place yourself? What do you consider what you do? How do you describe it? Uh, just something to do. <laughs> uh, well, you could give it the big sell if you want. I mean, that's, that's fine. I, I go around with a camera and just uh, uh, show people what I see and uh, uh, try and find the truth. And... Um, and then, you know, go back home, have a beer. <laughs> Doesn't sound as hard as I thought it was, I must admit. Well, that's you, why I do it. Um, let's have a look. There's a, there's a new movie uh, that Michael has, which is coming out in this country, I think, next week. Yes. Uh, called Bowling for Columbine. Yes. OK, we're going to have a look at a clip at it. Um, first of all, will you, will you set up what happens here? This is early in the movie, isn't it? Uh, yes, this is in, uh, where near where I live, in Michigan. And uh, I opened up the paper one day and saw an ad for a bank. And I thought it kind of curious, but 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 very American. Okay. So I went to the bank to open up an account. It's, um, it's 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 a tremendously funny film, but it's also a strange, you know, it's a very moving film, and it's a it's quite a frightening film because what you're looking at is a you know is a terrifying subject matter in America. It's kind of like rampant gun use, gun ownership, and one of the points you make in the movie that particularly hit home with me was that here you have a culture which has an awful lot of weapons. Your neighbours to the north in Canada, they have, you know, a similar number per person, I Nowhere near the incident of violent gun-related crimes or killings. What's the difference there? Why is it so different? Well, I think, uh, I think it's because the Canadians uh, have learned how to behave well with each other, and we haven't as Americans. Uh, we believe it's every man for himself, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, me, 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 and it's, and, uh, uh, I think that leads to this attitude that it's okay uh, to reach for the gun whenever you have to resolve a dispute, whether it's personally with your neighbor or your, someone in your family, uh, or whether it's with Saddam Hussein. It's, it's let's just go bomb him first and we'll find out later if he's got any weapons. Does it frighten you what's happening in your country? Of course. Doesn't it frighten you? It terrifies it me. <laughs> the whole world should just be... I mean, here's a guy in the White House who wants to bomb a country he can't find on the map. <laughs> 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 but you know, we're kind of laughing at it, and I know some people have criticized. We're only laughing because we don't want to cry. Yeah, it's... but people have criticized you and said that sometimes you find humor in situations in which there should be none, like in the movie. Who are these people? Uh, <laughs> those guys there. They, they said it to me earlier. But uh, people have said, you know, in Bowling for Columbine, because there's some footage in the middle of that film which is just uh, some of the most starkly horrific footage I've ever seen in my life. You actually say, if you remember what happened at the high school in Columbine, where some kids, one morning, after going bowling, they cut loose with, with, with weapons, basically hunting weapons, right. I believe. They didn't want to miss their first hour class in school, which was their bowling class. They actually get high school credit for going bowling at 7 in the morning. And then they went on to participate in that other all-American sport, picking up the guns. But now, how do you answer critics who say, well, you know, you shouldn't be doing anything amusing near that subject matter? What do you say to those sort of people? I think it's, I think it's important to go uh, in film, in my films, to those places that are uncomfortable and painful, uh, and through humor, uh, try and find the truth. And, uh, and that's what I do uh, in this film, and that's what I've done, uh, actually, since you guys let me on the air here first, uh, back in 93, 94, when I had my show on the BBC, TV Nation. And, uh, and, I, and because of that, I was allowed to do it in America. Well, we have another clip to look at. This is from uh, another TV show you did that was on over here. Uh, the, the Awful Channel Truth. 4. The Awful Channel Truth, 4. Uh -huh. uh, it's a, Once again, it kind of, I think, very aptly illustrates what you just said. It's, it's, a, it's an awful subject matter, and yet it's terribly funny. Would you set this clip up for us? Um, we went, it was Christmas time, and Philip Morris is the largest tobacco uh, company uh, in the world, uh, biggest cigarette maker. And, uh, and I thought, you know, being Christmas time, because I'm known for the guy who always goes after the corporate guys, making their lives miserable, you know, it's Christmas, let's put it away, Mike, and uh, do something nice uh, in the spirit of the season. And so I, I took a group of senior citizens uh, who had lost their um, uh, larynxes, their voice boxes, due to secondhand smoke uh, that they've been breathing in their homes for the, all their lives. People are kind of slightly unsure how to take it because, of course, it's, it's funny, but then you realize the, you know, the grim and gruesome truth behind it is the fact that these guys have suffered terribly. And not only that, by now, they're all dead, all the people in that clip. 
Yeah. Do you think there's a reluctance sometimes for people to accept what you're saying is the truth because it just seems so, so apparently, you know, openly wrong? And, and grotesque and awful. Uh, for example, in your book, you point out, uh, and Michael has a book out at the moment, Stupid White Men, that I believe there's a chapter which looks at the kind of connections between people holding very high office in the United States government right now and their corporate benefactors uh, throughout the election and even up to the present day, I believe. Yes. And when you read it, you cannot believe that these are the people running the country who are so clearly in the pocket of big business. Absolutely. There's at least uh, almost a dozen people in Bush's cabinet and the people in the White House that are former corporate chairmen. Uh, they, they ran large American corporations and now they're there running the United States as if it is a corporation. Um, it's a terrific book. It, uh, it's very funny and somewhat depressing, but in a good way, I think. Yeah, Stupid White good Men depression, is but, the name yeah. of the book. Um, and you are also on for a, a period between now and up to Christmas at the Roundhouse here in London. Yeah, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a live show at the Roundhouse for the next uh, month or so uh, where I'm going to, uh, you know, do a lot of my thing. And, and we're also going to, each night, try to catch Osama bin Laden from, live from the stage. Because, uh, and, you know, there's a $25 million reward out for wow. me still. And I intend to share it with the audience on whatever night we catch Osama bin Laden. You know, for a cut of 25 million, I'll pretend to be Osama bin Laden if one yeah. catch me. <laughs> well, you have to keep your ticket stub, though, to verify <laughs> that you know Osama. Um, I can't wait. I'm going to come and see you. I'm very keen to see what you oh, do good. live on yeah, stage. Yeah, I'm, like I'm real excited about it. It's great to be here in London. and. Right. and uh, and thanks for having me on the show. It's, uh, well, it's my pleasure because for many years I've admired the work you do and the films you make. Uh, Michael, thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Thank on. you, Jonathan. Michael Morley. <laughs>